the MD and Group Chief Operating Officer, India at Deutsche Bank. He strategically leads the bank's second largest and top four PL contributor franchisee with close to 18,000 staff. His extensive banking experience includes several leadership roles across both client facing, risk management, strategy, business management, operations, and infrastructure units at a national, APAC, and global level. This includes wholesale, retail, private, and transaction banking, markets, and corporate finance. Among his many responsibilities, Mr. Khurshid also chairs the Deutsche Bank Group Operating Committee, the Asset Liability Committee, the Risk Management Committee, the CSR Governing Committee, and is Vice Chair of the India Executive Committee and the Branch Management Board. Additionally, he heads the DNI Council for India and is an ESG advocate and an active proponent of sustainable development priorities. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us in today's webinar. I'm sure your experience and expertise is adding a lot of value to the participants today. Over to you. Thank you, Balaji. Um, thank you for the kind words. Good evening, everyone. It's a delight to be here and uh, interact with the future of the country. Right. So um, I'm, I'm going to keep this presentation pretty focused around the themes. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. This is what we're gonna to cover today. And uh, I, would, I would keep this pretty brief and want to leave a little more time for q and &E so I can actually answer the questions you have. So let's get right into it. Um, I, th there's some background noise. Can I request you guys to go on mute if you're not talking, please? Thank you. So yeah, Afia, over to you. Can we go to the next slide, please? All right, so this, this is um, something which applies not only to banking, but to every industry we are in today. Um, all of us have seen how uh, disruptive COVID was right? and the pandemic where the entire country just shut down and overnight we had to unlearn and relearn a lot of things uh, which we had been doing for many years. Right? So being future ready and keeping up to date on developments is relevant regardless of what you're doing. Right? We, we never stop learning. And today we're very lucky to have so many mediums where information is a click or a tap away. And so I would encourage all of you to keep learning no matter where, what stage of your career you are at. Understand what's happening in the market, not just related to your field. Upskill, right? Today, you've got a lot of courses that are available online. You've got a lot of uh, free courses, right? Uh, you, you've got um, things which you can do sitting at home. You don't need to go to physical universities. And most important is to connect and network, right? The exchange of ideas. If you don't know something that you, you can, there are blogs, there are Q&As, there is Quora. There, there, there's a wealth of information out there which uh, you can monetize on. Right? And, and more so in banking, where things um, in the payment space or with technology are getting more and more easier day to day. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in the next slide. So can I request you to go to the next slide, please? Okay. So what exactly is banking, right? Banking is nothing but a service. It's similar to any other service industry we have out there where the client is at the center of everything we do. Right? So, so we, we are here to serve the client. We need to understand what the client needs are, how do we make them simple, and how do we deliver an efficient ecosystem, right? So I'll give you an example as to what's happening. You, you take a, a big FMCG company right? and uh, in COVID or with digitization, first you had demonetization in 2016, which actually made all of us move to digital. It, it forced us overnight to adopt digital payments. And then you had a lot of other things, including COVID, which just reinforced it. So clients are changing the way they behave because their clients are forcing them to do different things, right? Um, the
the entire end to end digital thing for example that unilever is doing is amazing right and if if you are a partner you need to keep up to to kind of match their progress otherwise you'll be left out so you innovate you customize you partner with people right so if if, if for example if if there is a startup that's doing something which is part of client ecosystem you bring in your expertise as a bank and you partner with them you create new products you customize products for clients right a lot of people think that a standard product can be used across the spectrum and that doesn't work because each client is structured differently their needs are different so while the basic premise might be the same you have to customize solutions for clients and that is what will work if we could move on please so we we've got focus and prioritization right today today what happens is there is a lot out there right? so there's an information overload and um, i'm sure when you guys uh, do a search for something you will be you, you you will be stunned with the number of results that come in and plus how, how would you how would you kind of focus on that recording in progress sorry there's some background noise so can i request you to go on mute please all right so picking up from where we went uh, how, how would you prioritize right what is time management how do you pick up what is the most important and impactful uh, task that you need to do right and that comes with experience it comes with collaboration it comes with understanding the entire client ecosystem and figuring out how you plug in the gaps so all you need to do is you need to not get distracted you need to focus on the end objective you need to keep delivering consistently you need to keep efficiently optimizing the end to end process because that is what is going to actually work in the long run right there are no shortcuts you have a process you keep refining it based on how the market is moving how how different developments are impacting stuff right? and then you keep repeating it it you think of banking as a factory right where you have transactions coming in and they just keep moving out and out and out right and you you recently read about upi now going global with uh, with singapore adopting it that is because what we have is one of the most unique products i don't know if you know but one third of all global digital payments are done in india that's something to be very proud of and that's what's come through with focus and prioritization linking things some of you might remember earlier we used to have checks and out station checks used to take uh, days to clear but all of that has now become so easy with scanning the qr code digital payments and all of this comes through when you prioritize you focus and you keep pursuing excellence could we move on please so there is there is a lot it, it's it's very easy to to make a project very complex right and then lose sight of why we started in the first place because again there's a lot out there that you can draw on and so you you keep it simple you avoid any jargon you you make things very easy to understand then you bring in you bring in the the experts right and you bring in the cross disciplinary thinking you you have uh, people say say you working on a project you have somebody who comes in with technical expertise somebody who comes in with professional expertise someone who's the subject matter expert somebody who brings in the client perspective and that is how you able to you, that this is basically the diversity which comes in whenever you're working on something you you bring in more people this is not this is a team play it's not a solo play right you have to keep an open mind what worked yesterday will not work tomorrow 
the the rate at which things are getting disrupted by technology is mind blowing right i mean just just look at the functions your smartphone has replaced in the last 5 years and that is only going to get better and better now the other thing which which kind of i would request you guys to focus on is moving out of your comfort zone right it's very easy to get comfortable in what we doing so you should move out of your comfort zone you should be willing to take calculated risks because that is what's going to be a differentiator between you and somebody else and of course you need to be willing to take the responsibility which comes with it right particularly in a team everyone needs to pull their weight otherwise um, we will not be successful could we move on please afia all right i'd like to spend a little bit of time out here um, because uh, to me this is the most important slide right and um, it's it's very easy to give advice it's very easy to to kind of uh, direct people it's very easy to to um at the leadership level to be a little distance and and monitor things right but in in my experience what i have realized is that this doesn't work sorry this there's again some noise okay so what 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 we've realized is um if you pick any of the leaders right today and you you look at the role models that come to mind when you look at a certain industry um these are people who lead from the front these are people who uh, walk the talk right these these are, these are not these are not people who will sit in an ivory tower and then have an army running around these are people who understand challenges these are people who support failure right um, and the fear of failure is one of the biggest uh, deterrents to people to take risk or to progress right you have to encourage your team to be comfortable with what they're doing to be able to actually um, come up with ideas to have an environment where people are not afraid to speak up no idea is small no suggestion is basic right um, most most people don't speak up because they think that their uh, suggestions are are not important or they will get ridiculed so as leaders you need to foster an environment which is inclusive you need to you need to make sure that everybody participates in my experience the best um, suggestions have come from the most unexpected quarters right the users the, and you you need to cut out the noise right you, you also need to figure out that uh, most most of the stuff you get um, should be measured by one is it meeting your objective two is it practical and realistic and three does it fit into your budget or your cost right and at the end of the day these will drive how you do things most importantly as a leader you need to be accountable right you you need to be able to um, stand up and take if if there is a failure then you are as responsible as your team uh, members you can't shirk responsibility or shove it on people it's easy to do so right and as you have people reporting to you but uh, to to take the accountability to fix the problem is what makes you a better leader uh, i will pause over here now and kind of uh, balaji we could uh, have you talk a little bit about this and then go into the q and a if that's okay with you sure sir i'll take it from here so uh, this is uh, about the mba in banking and financial services uh, that we are launching as the first batch on an online format taking the legacy forward from the 
physical classrooms that we uh, run in TAPME for the same program, which comes with a, a record uh, of having 100% placement over the last uh, eight, 10 years. You know, we have launched it on an online format for the first time this year. And uh, the, the, the whole purpose of reaching out to more number of students in terms of the online format, ensuring that you don't have to uh, leave your job and come come attend the whole uh, two-year program as a full-time program and work it from an online uh, perspective is what the intent is. The course duration is for 24 months. It's on an online format, like I mentioned. The degree is uh, uh, provided by uh, TAPME, the TAPI Management Institute. The whole cutting edge curriculum that, that has been clearly the plus point about this program, the offline version is what we have kept it in the online model also. You get a lot of real world learning experience, a lot of industry integration and, and, and all cross fertilization of ideas. Complete command over the digital transformation of the banking sector. You talk about cryptocurrency, you talk about uh, blockchain technology and innovations. All that is important in today's new age banking is covered in this program. You acquire all, all the specializations that are currently in trend. You speak about analytics for banking and finance, banking overall assets, the capital market, or even the advanced corporate finance. So we have specializations uh, to take from in, in the semester uh, after the first year. So it's a very well-crafted program, which we have launched in online format. If uh, people are aware about the, the legacy that this program has got in its uh, offline format, we continue with the strengths of that. Talking a bit about TAPME and YTAPI Management Institute, it is AICT approved, has got AMBA accredited, it's AACSB International Accreditation. Ranked among the top 20 B schools in India, it's recognized by uh, ASCOM. You know, it has got all the top. 5% of business schools in the worldwide who have been accredited with uh, you know, the, the AACSB accreditation. It is among the top eight institutes in India to have both, you know, it's a double crown institute having both AACSB and AMBA certification and accreditation. So you, from, a, from an institute perspective, we are joining among the best of the industry in terms of the cutting edge curriculum that we have for the program. It's completely carrying forward the legacy of the offline program into its online avatar. Any questions from the, the overall webinar and to do with the programs, we're willing to take it. There is a question from Arnab. I'm not sure who will be able to pick this up. Uh, the, I, the question Arnab asks, what is the way to get forward in my banking career in terms of degree or certificate? Work, he's working in Punjab National Bank currently. Uh, maybe maybe I'll I'll try and uh, answer this and then uh, you know Balaji you can you can add right if that's okay with you yeah. sure sir yeah. so um, Arnab uh, thank you for your question and um, um, all the very best in your career right and Punjab National Bank is a good bank to to get grounded and get a lot of experience. Right? I think what works is, is twofold. One is putting your hand up for different projects, understanding um, how banking really works, trying to do different things, seeing how you can rotate and understand how different department works. So you have a more holistic view of the industry. This program that Balaji spoke about is also a very good program. And uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know what, um, I, I don't have enough information to give you a very specific answer, but um, you, should, you should definitely go through the curriculum and see how this will complement um, the, the, the practical knowledge you have with the, with the, with the basic, uh, you know, sessions and theory that is going to come your way from this online program. And the good best thing is you don't even need to leave your job. You can do it part time. And uh, Balaji, you want to add a little bit more about the program so that uh, Arnav understands what's happening. Sure, sir. So Arnav, uh, you know, probably we can connect offline and I can understand your profile a little better. 
to give you a exact solution of how this can work. But on a generic note, uh, the experience that you currently carry with PNB and uh, uh, an addition of upskilling yourself, not just the banking domain, any domain today upskilling is the way forward. You know how this program is going to help you. It adds a lot more new age learning and new age uh, uh, work uh, that is involved in today's banking world with all the traditional banking experience that you probably carry a lot in terms of how today's new age banking works, not just bank. You look at the consulting firms or the fintech companies, the way the whole finance uh, infrastructure or the whole domain has changed its, its whole play. You know, this program will clearly uh, help you uh, reach out there. It adds a lot of the new age technology and requirements that are there in today's uh, banking domain. Yes, your experience with PNB will also help a lot. So we can probably connect uh, a little later tomorrow or whenever time permits for you and understand uh, your profile and your roles and responsibility better so that I can give you a personalized suggestion on how this program can fit into your requirement. Uh, thank you so much, Hoshita and Balaji, for this answer. Uh, we have another question from Seema Pimple, and she asks if she has 15 years of experience as senior project manager in IT. Do you think this program is going to help her? And uh, she also uh, suggests that she has most experience in IT telecom and one year of experience in capital market. Mm, this program would not suit you uh, from a job perspective. After 15 years of experience, what will help you is the experience that you currently carry. This is for uh, mid-level up, up till um, say around five to six years of experience. And, and uh, if you're coming more from a banking domain, this will surely help you. If you're not coming from a banking domain, anything around four to five years of experience can help you land a job uh, you know, into the banking sector. This MBA is purely for banking and financial services. So someone with pure IT experience for 15 years, I do not think this program is going to be helpful to you. Hope that, hope you got your answer, Seema. Uh, another question, uh, Pushi, sir, uh, maybe you can pick it up, is uh, from Trisha. And uh, Trisha asks, is there a huge scope in this sector for coming years as AI started ruling these areas? Uh, uh, thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Trisha, for that interesting question, right? I think, um, yeah, there, there's a lot of scope. Right? And let's let's face it, as long as uh, you will have uh, people buying and selling things, uh, banking and financial services won't go away. Right? And uh, basically, if, if you look at history, it's only evolved. What AI is going to do is AI is going to make things a lot simpler. So a lot of repetitive tasks that we have uh, will eventually move to AI. But what's going to happen is then uh, time will be freed up for the bankers to do more interesting stuff. I do believe uh, things are only getting started in, the, in this segment. And uh, we will see a lot of action coming in, uh, particularly when you look at uh, digital currencies or you look at a lot of the, um, the cross-border trade. Uh, UPI with Singapore that I mentioned is just the beginning. Just think about it, right? Your ability to seamlessly kind of just move money across to, say, a relative you have somewhere else. And not very long back, even that wasn't possible. You, you, you were using checks about 10 years back. So yeah, it is it is an exciting um, uh, kind of time. And I don't have your background, but you could connect with Balaji and team to find out specifically what it is that you're looking for. I also don't know if AI will be covered in some 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 way into the, um, into the course, but then that's something Balaji will help you with. Balaji, would you like to add anything? So, uh, directly, uh, we do not cover in-depth AI uh, into this program, but that's where our partnership with Coursera comes into play, where uh, there are we have handpicked uh, certain programs which are going to add uh, the extensive or uh, extended learning from the main program. There we have suggested AI and a lot of other additional uh, uh, tools also into the learning. 
So we covered that in, in, in a very uh, deep way there. And that comes with additional uh, certifications from international universities. And, uh, and that, so AI is covered into this program in, a, in an indirect way. Thank you so much for the answers. Uh, and another question is from Mohak Srivastava who asks, so what can we expect from the financial and banking sector moving forward as it is still very new? Please share your thoughts. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question very well, Afira. Um, what can we expect from the banking and financial sector? It's banking isn't really a new sector per se. It's been around for uh, ever in this in this shape and form. It's only evolving. Right? Um, if, if you guys saw the budget, right, and uh, the government has um, has kind of got a lot of uh, infrastructure investments lined up. You you go around everywhere. You see there is massive. Uh, infrastructure upgrade happening, the national highways, you've got a lot happening on um, the metros and a few others. So there is a lot of banking involved in this. The, the banking that's involved comes around uh, trade, where you import export, it's around foreign exchange, it's around, um, it's around project finance, it's around a lot of the working capital that you need. I'm just giving you one example. Then you have the digital payments, right? Where typically um, you could you could look at it from a, from a retail point of view, but also from a corporate point of view, where you have treasurers in in companies who whose job is to manage um, the, the liquidity of the company, and they have different banking tools. Which make um, which make a lot of uh, which make a lot of different um, things easy for them, right? In terms of cash pooling, real time MIS, right? Uh, how do you think Amazon reconciles stuff at the end of the day? They have these tools which eventually will get pooled into a bank, and then um, that is how it happens. The same thing that an Uber or an Ola do at the back end, there is a bank eventually where the settlement does happen. Because as things are today, banks are regulated. And um, basically that is, even if you're using an intermediary or a FinTech at the end of the day, the settlement has to happen from a bank. So there is a lot that can happen. Again, it's a very wide and diverse field. So you 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 need to understand what area you're looking at and kind of try and start from there i hope i have been able to address your question uh, but if, if you have a follow-on question please let me know and i'll speak specifically on that one uh, there's a question from balaji uh, who says currently i'm working as a senior process associate in cognizant should I pursue this MBA course? Does it help uh, me to grow in my career? Balaji, maybe you can pick this up. Uh, can you please repeat that uh, question again? Uh, okay. Yeah, currently I'm working as a senior process associate in Cognizant. Should I okay. pursue this MBA course? Will it help in my career? See, again, uh, you know, if, if I can... If we have to connect offline to clearly understand your role or experience, what you've done, how many years of experience you have, what is the process that you have handling in Cognizant, how much can you connect with the financial domain and all of that to give me a, a clear answer. Uh, so probably uh, tomorrow or any time you, you have time, you can ask the team to connect them, uh, you know, connect me with you and we can have this discussion. I'll have to have more uh, details in terms of your personal experience. Can I, can I just uh, follow up to that, Balaji, because we yes, seem please. to be getting a lot of these questions. Right? Right, right. So um, to everyone, you, you might not have done banking before, right? And um, in, in the true sense, as somebody, I think Arnav has, has been working in Punjab National Bank, you might be incognizant or you might be doing something else. 
but there are there are parts of banking where some of the experience you have you can actually broad base okay and uh, you could if you are seriously serious about a career you could look at it because banks hire people um, in two categories one is obviously the kind of banking we doing which is uh, client facing and and the back end but they also have huge uh, shared service centers right where some of these um, uh, talents you have are in demand so i would i would say you should definitely go through the curriculum that balaji is talking about it will if nothing help you understand the industry and then If any skill sets you have you could try and see how they complement what you have to offer right? yes yeah. uh taking a cue from there i think uh, the one of our previous question if i'm not wrong from seema uh, who had 15 years of experience as a project manager in and will this be shooting i think the same uh, thing applies whatever your current experience is if you can broad base it into the banking and financial services yes this program might fit in but you know we will have to clearly look at it from an individual perspective what you have currently and how much can we relate your experience to what is required in in this domain and then take the conversation forward thank you sir uh if anybody has any questions please feel free to message in the q and a section on it then i think uh, we do not have any more questions afia we we can Okay, I have just got a cue that two people have raised their hands. So we are recording on this session. Uh, Neil Bose, right? Um, uh, do you have anything to say? Shall we put you on speaker? Or if you could just kindly type your question in the Q and A section, then we can address it. uh yes we will uh, share the recording of this session with everybody i think that that will be all i think from the attendee side all right then thank you so much sir for joining us today and and sharing all your insights it was great to get connected with you and and get your thoughts on the topics that you have spoken i'm sure this this connection and this learning is going to help all of us in the in the future thank you so much for spending your time with us no it was a delight and a pleasure and i wish all of you the very best in your careers right thank you for inviting me balaji and my pleasure sir. thank you so much once again prashit sir and balaji for uh, joining us today and thank you everyone for mm-hmm. attending the session on a thank yeah this evening thank, thank you so much and thank have you a good day yeah we'll wrap it up now thank you so much thank you everyone and wish you all a very happy women's day and a happy holi thank you balaji <laughs> okay then we'll wrap this up thank you so much for your time once again